Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sitting in the front row over by um, Prophet Shalane. And then uh, we're just uh, Prophet's table. Yeah. 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 So, Thank <laughs> you. 
me and my lovely wife, we had to leave for a moment. That's why we saw one of the things, uh, um, a little late. Um, I do apologize for that. Uh, we had an emergency to run to. Um, but to God be the glory, amen. Amen. And this is what I want to say to you ministers and leaders, that your work will never stop. The work will never stop. The work will never stop. You're never off duty. You're never off duty. You're never off duty. You're, you're, you're duty. When duty calls, you're on duty. You're on duty. Amen. Amen. I see y'all first up again. Y'all can't scoop y'all seats over just a little bit if y'all want to scoop over a little bit. That's fine. Amen. Hallelujah. You need a little room, need a little room. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Now, here we are. Redeemed Faith Fellowship has gathered to ordain these pastors that are here on this roster right here, down here on this floor, right here in the front. Uh, pastor Terry Edwards, she will be installed as pastor. And Minister Deborah Hill, Minister Lashana Cole, Assistant Pastor Denise Cole, Prophetess April Price, Youth Pastor Anthony Hempler, Minister Joseph Harris, and Deacon Eugene. Hallelujah. Brief, uh, arise. Are you pronouncing your last name? Yeah. 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 Okay. To Christian ministry. Redeem Faith Fellowship, St. Heavy Christian Jubilee Outreach Ministry, and New Life International Ministry. We're all here today to be a part of this great big new version. Amen. 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 Come on, let's give God praise. Hey, wait, hey, wait, hey, man. Deacon, Deacon David, you yeah. recording everything, right? Yep. You got that main camera recording? Yep. All right, all right, all right. We, uh, hallelujah, God is doing something great, amen. Y'all comfortable with me? We turn the air conditioner on full blast. Uh, y'all sure? Y'all, y'all sure? Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. But the rolls don't get hot. Amen. To God be the glory, amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to have a reading of the scripture by our very own Pastor Charles Henry. You got to read the whole chapter, so that'll be up with us. Come on, let's give God praise. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm excited today. Amen. God is doing a great work in this place. Glad to see everybody here to celebrate with us as we move on in the next level of the ministry. Giving God the glory to do his name. Our scripture will be coming from 1 Timothy chapter 4, the entire chapter. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Is that the whole book? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. And it reads the following, now the Spirit speaking, speaking expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrine of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding abstain from me, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast, hast, hast attained, but refuse profane and old wise fables and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For a body exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promised the life that is now, and of that which is to come. 
This is a faithful saying and worthy of accept acceptation. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. These things command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy property may appear unto all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Amen. Amen. And the word of God is blessed. Come on, listen to God. Getting closer and closer to that time, amen. Um, whew, I'm gonna give God another hand for you. So now we're going to raise an offering for uh, this afternoon, amen. And then we're going to have another selection. And then we're going to, uh, each one of us is going to give a word of encouragement. Um, 15 minutes each. And then if you can do it in one minute, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Well, we come to let God use us so that we can encourage you all today. And you know, even those of you that are still running from your calling, there's a purpose. And the reason why you came here on today, because spiritually you have been ordained also. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. You know, some of us we say we're not ready yet. You know, and, but I know a God that said, "You look." Yeah, I remember I talked to y'all about sometimes God don't push you; He'll show you. <laughs> And we don't like it when people come to the crowd. They, they push it for one, but not each other. Now that really calls your ego to come up. Amen. Hallelujah. God just puts you right on out there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Deacon Kevin. Mm, I'm right here. With Deacon I, Kevin. I got one up in a year. Okay. 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 We're going to have another deacon added on to our roster. Hallelujah. We didn't been going here, I believe, since we came over here. You came, you lived right down the block, and you just walked on in. I thought he was looking for the whole church, but he was looking to join this church. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Well, we want to sh uh, stand and follow uh, the direction of Usher right here, amen. Hallelujah.
long time ago, Joanne, is that God loves a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. Father, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, I ask that you bless those that gave and those that didn't have to give but touch this basket anyhow. Somebody say anyhow. Anyhow. I'm asking that God that you will cause the overflow of miracles and blessing of calling. God, that you will just bless them, God, when they come, bless them when they go, God. Meet their need on purpose. Meet their need on purpose, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, God, what I'm just saying right now, God, hallelujah. I'm asking for a devil for their trouble. That's a small bit to what they have given. And I know that, God, hallelujah, what we ask for is a small thing. Because you do bigger, you go beyond, you go far beyond our expectations. So God, me it right now. Whatever the need may be, somebody say, Lord, Lord meet, meet my need. My need. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, somebody give God praise. I said it like that because it's not for the pastor to meet your need or the mother to meet your need, but it's for God to meet your need. So, we have planned this out, and uh, because of the pandemic, I, went, I didn't really want to invite too many people. Uh, so, we figured we'll just do it. Great friend, Pastor Walter Lawrence. Walter Lawrence. And the one who's been there since year one, Pastor Charles Emery. And it's amazing, we're gonna get a selection, but I just wanna you know, say something about these great men because we're gonna all be encouraging you. And, you know, meeting Charles at the time I met Charles, didn't know anything about him, but I met him and I saw the God in him. And he saw the ministry and, you know, he had in mind coming to a living room and dying room. The same setup I had here, I had a projector, a screen behind me with my computer hooked up to it. We worked everything from the pool pit. Uh, you know, what he, what, what David was doing back there, man, we worked everything from right here. You know, and we had an organ. Jeff Jones played the organ. He's he been there since day one. And he's been playing. And God has really been blessing. And when I met Charles, it was this amazing thing. It was a treat. You know, we got to talk. We got to minister to one another. You know, we got to lift up one another. And, and understanding one another, even when we are broken. You know, when, when, when he moved to Texas, I knew he was coming back. <laughs> and when he came back, you know, even, you know, it, it was amazing. It became right here where he left. And they became my assistant pastor of Redeemed Faith Fellowship Church. And in the process of us getting ready to buy a building, I joined a job, went to a job, I got a job working for a Triumph Trucking Company. My trainer was no other than Walter Owens. And we don't see, the thing is, we can pick up on each other's spirit by the way we act. And then right away knowing that I can confide in him about some things I was trying to do. Recognizing the God in him and him recognizing the God in me. Yes. From that day, we became friends. He was training me in that job. 
not the drive, I do have a drive, the papers. Uh, and we talked and we talked and we talked. My biggest challenge was what should I do between getting this or getting that? This building, as y'all, uh, most of you that were here, that was in the church then, uh, when we was about to buy uh, a building, we were thinking about this one and thinking about another building, with two buildings right next to each other. But one of those buildings sold, and that one building wasn't been big enough. And I sought counsel with Walter, Walter Owens. And I saw counsel with a cousin of mine, which is down in the southern cities, Somerville, Tennessee. And he said, if God put it on your heart, the same question you gave me and the same question he gave me, if God put it on your heart to get it, and you can get it, then get it. You know, and that's what we did. We, we, we bought this building, we got it debt free, and I thank God for it, and God is putting it through some great things. So I thank him, and I thank Pastor Charles, and I thank all of you that are here. You know, uh, the deacons in here have been doing a, a magnificent job, but think about Deacon Kenny. I want to say this, but you, you all want to have those leaders. You all want to have those ministers and those leaders and those people. You know, some of y'all just, you know, dang ministers and assistant pastors, but one day you're going to be a pastor. You know, you never know what God planned is from this point because God said, Look, I, I get the Lord saying, How do you change your status? Come on, Amen. Amen. So, Amen. And you may get a, you may get a deacon candy in your church. And a lot of stuff that the church do have big in Canada brought it to the church. You'll call and say, Pastor, I got this and I got that. And I say, well, let's see it. And then we'll church meeting it and we'll put it in the church. Amen. He's been there, drove the church van until he couldn't drive it no more. But he would drive a van on the last leg. And he was here. <laughs> But I'm going to tell you, he's, he's, such a, he's, he's such a dedicated deacon to the point where he was just simply, he was driving a van one day, he had all the, uh, the saints in the van on the way to church. And the tie rod broke. So he had sense enough to get on the ground and put the tie on the high square of the lead van. I'm glad it was high enough to get on there. And uh, he put the tie rod back in the slot. What you do? You tie a clothes hanger to it or something? A bungee cord. A bungee cord. You put a bungee cord on it and you made a good turn. Won't God do it? So at this time, we want to have a selection from a very own Pastor Charles Emory. And, and this young man right here, I'm calling him young, he's older than me, but he's young. Uh, he got a lot in him. Thank God he needs you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I got to bury my voice back, you know. But, you know, I see it anyway. I don't care. God still gets the glory. But that's a worship song in my spirit. Lord, what is Yeah, we sing it now. Lord, what 
Hallelujah. But the children of Israel, they went through some things. But in the process of them going through some things, God had a purpose and a plan for all that. The purpose was to raise up Moses. And, and so the purpose was that, okay, now Moses' mother would put him in the now and had his daughter follow him, had her daughter follow him to wherever he goes. Now, we keep a track on the son, trying to make sure that something don't go wrong with the way we want to know what happens because the now wasn't a friendly now. The now wasn't something you just send your kids down as they go swimming. The now was crocodile infested now. But when God got a purpose over your life, hallelujah, hallelujah, he allowed you to go in the destination of sinful people, people back by the talking about you, tell you never amount to anything. But God has a purpose over your life, hallelujah. God arranged, he raised up an Egyptian in the palace for the hour. He raised up, let me put like this, let me go back. He raised up an Israelite in an Egyptian household. Hallelujah. He, 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 and if the king had any sense at all, he would have known that his sister didn't have a son. Hallelujah. So that goes to show you that God had a purpose for Moses. I want to raise you up in a place where you can learn their language. The purpose was 
for him to have a God encounter. All this time, all of those idols, all of those images didn't mean anything when he met God. It didn't mean nothing when he met God. It didn't mean nothing when he met God. God changed everything about Moses. Hallelujah. And here's the thing I love about it. God gives him a staff.
understand it's not about you, it's all about him. See, he chose you for a time as this. He chose you for right now. I'm looking at the candidates that sat up front. It wasn't Joe choice, it wasn't your choice to be here. It was our protest before you was even born. You gotta catch what I just said. Before you was in your mother room, God said from the crown of his heaven, I know who I'm gonna choose to do my work. See, you ain't got nothing to do with it, you just a vessel. I come to tell somebody today somewhere, you gotta trust and believe in what the Lord will do for you. See, God not short of his word. See, he said, I knew you before I created you. You got to catch that. I knew you before I created you. See, I just need a, a vessel to get you here. That's why they call him mom and dad. And see, what he said in the mom and dad, he said, I will put something in them that is going to deliver my word. See, it ain't about you. It's all about him. Look at your neighbor and say, Something I want to read 
I have a couple of scriptures that God put in my spirit. Do this real quick. Um, you hear me? It's the call of God. I taught this lesson to the ministers about three years ago, and it says the call of God. And it says there are many who claim to have been called by God to ministry. It's very important to make sure that the call you have answered is from God and not from men or yourself. You may ask, how can I be sure of this call is from God? There's something that you have to evaluate based on your experience to urge or pull your life and prayer and fasting and the word of God. As we begin to look at the call of God, we need to first look at what the call is not. The call of God is not being selected by men. Men of God have responsibility to choose others to assist them in the work they call to do. When Moses realized the children of Israel had grown to the point where he could not write the hand of all matters that arose among them, he handed the advice over to his father-in-law and selected judges to assist him in helping the people. And that's in Exodus chapter 18, verse 13 and 26. And when the possibly perceived that they could not minister to all the widows themselves, they selected an honest men full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom and prayed over them and laid hands on them, sent them into the, uh, to service. And that's Acts chapter 6, verse 1 through 6. Although some of these men, such as Stephen and Philip, went on to do great things for the Lord, even to be martyred for their faith, were not called by God to ministry. They were selected by men. This is not to say that their work for God was, was unimportant. It's only dealing with the reality of how they entered their work. Those who are called by God into ministry are called to serve leadership in the church. The leadership does not necessarily mean that everyone is supposed to be a pastor. We have become so focused with the office of pastor that other ministries' offices are overlooked. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 7 says, the apostle Paul mentioned what we uh, know as the ministry gifts. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors, some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for edifying the body. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 and 12. Those who fill these offices are to develop the, the saints to do the work of ministry so that the body of Christ, the church, can be built up and grow. As we develop our ministry, God will begin to direct us towards our specific office of ministry. When, the five, uh, when all five of the ministry gifts are in operation in the church, the people are blessed. As we walk with God and grow and develop and prepare for, to be used by God, just because we are called does not mean we are supposed to go out and set up a church. There is no other field where a novice can begin practicing without preparing. A doctor cannot conduct the surgery until he has studied and completed all the requirements to be issued his license to practice medicine. No athlete is able to play a professional level until he has thoroughly prepared to be the best at his position. It is the same with ministry. Those that have been called to ministry must prepare themselves in order to be qualified to be sent out by God. This preparation must include prayer, study, work in ministry, submission to authority, and assisting with the development of God's people. And once they all have thoroughly prepared for the ministry, they are ready to be ordained and sent out. That's what God gave me. In, in, in verse Corinthians chapter 9, verse, uh, verse 13 and 14, I'm going to read the Amplified verse because it makes it a lot more clear. It says, do you not know that those men who are employed in the service of the temple get their food from the temple? And that those who are tending the altar will share with the altar in the offerings brought. In other words, God said, whatever type of area of ministry you're doing, you're going to get your reward from that ministry. And then he goes on and says, on the same principle, the Lord directed those who publish the good news, the gospel, should live and get their maintenance by the gospel. In other words, God is saying that as a leader, as a shepherd, as a pastor, as a minister, as a deacon, your offer that God called you to, you have a conviction in your heart that God told you this is what you're supposed to do in this season, in a moment of time for your life. You got to get in position. And he says you are required to preach the gospel. Every born again believer has been able by God to proclaim the ministry of the gospel. You don't have to be specifically a minister, but you are a minister of God to proclaim the gospel to those who are lost and perishing in the world. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 1, Paul said, I therefore, the prison of the Lord, appeal to you and beg that you walk, lead a life worthy of the divine calling to which you have been called. With a behavior that is crazy. 
and the call upon your life. You gotta continue to keep on proclaiming to God. He says, produce some of the spirit in the binding power of peace. The Holy Spirit will bind you in peace. And you gotta get to the place where God will keep me in perfect peace. Why? Because I keep my mind on him. I gotta get to the place of consecration.
me, you know, you know, I'm coming to church this morning. I don't know what pastor going to do. He might call me. Let's pray. I've got to be ready to pray. Amen. You know, all those things. So it's, it's, it's going to be something. We'll be ready. We're ready. We're ready. Um, uh, we got eight candidates from Beacon on down. And I'm going to have eight vessels of oil. These oil is going to be each of y'all. And we're going to give you guys in a moment your certificates and Pastor Terry, she got a big plaque up here. We're going to take that out so we can seal it. Amen. Uh, it does look beautiful. Uh, Paul, Vivian, Davis, and my auntie for picking that out. Amen. Uh, it's, 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 it's beautiful. Amen. And for everyone that's here that, that's being ordained, me, Pastor Owens, and Pastor Terry, we have signed all of y'all's y'all certificates, y'all certificates. And it's only three singers on Pastor Terry because y'all are being ordained today. Amen. And I don't know who colors what in that box, so y'all gonna have to help me. I don't see no names on them. So and some of you, you all are gonna be putting colors on you guys, and I'm gonna ask also ask to help with those colors. Uh, Prophet John and our Prophet Abel, Amen. Help put the colors on the women. Amen. And we will be praying. Amen. So, um, Pastor One, I want you to read this presentation of the candidate statement and then we're going to read some vows out of this book and, and we're going to move forward on that day. And y'all ready for this? Yeah. When I see y'all next week Sunday, I want y'all to be, I want, I want to see some, uh, some instigators. <laughs> amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. You know, it's a blessing and honor to be a part of this service. Um, and it's, it is an honor. I want to say this to you all before I read um, the presentation of the candidate. Your life for this day right now is going to be, it's never going to be the same. It's going to change it. This, what you're doing today to stand before the Lord, you are telling the Lord and witness, I'm ready to marry you. That's what I'm saying. He's saying, and you all are sitting here telling the Lord, I'm ready to get married. And I want to say this, and I mean from the bottom of my heart. If you're not ready for this, keep your hands down. Did they catch what I just said? Y'all miss what I said. She called, I said, if you're not ready for this, keep your hands down. It's an honor for you asking us to be a part of this. Amen. Well, you know how I feel about you. <laughs> God bless you and this whole family. But I want you all to know, I want you all to take this day. This is a very special day for your families and friends as with this, this, with this, this today. I want you to know, like I said, your life, your life will never be the same. Do it with honor. And if you love God, you will see things happening in your life. You will witness things in your life that you never witnessed before. And I want y'all to know this before I read the presentation. All eyes from this day is going to be on you. My question to you, how are you going to walk in? How are you going to walk in? This is not about the prestige. It's not about I'm a pastor, I'm a deaconess. It's not, it's not about you. It's about me. Amen. It says, the ordination of a Christian ministry is to proceed by the study, works, and prayer guided by the Spirit of God. I now call on representation of the sponsoring congregation of the Christian church, Pastor Anderson, Pastor Emily, Pastor Edwards, and myself, Pastor Owens, to offer witness to their readiness of ordination. Pastor, I want to turn it back over to you.
there's going to be some things that I've prayed you guys already, and I know some of you are, uh, we're not going to have you standing home. I know some of you, uh, your legs, your knees are bothering you. Uh, but if you can just ask God and think while you're sitting there, just for those moments. Amen. 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 So what I'm going to have now is uh, we're going to read some questions, and here's what I want you to I want you I want you to repeat after me just for a moment. I do. I do. The Lord being my helper. The Lord being my helper. I do. I do. The Lord. The Lord being my helper. Be my helper. That's going to be your answer, okay? So Pastor Charles, would you come and read the first one? Could you all please stand candidates? The first question, do you accept the Bible as God's inspired, infallible, inherent, immutable, indestructible, and indispensable word? Question. Do you understand the requirements, responsibilities, and uh, realities that are about to be placed upon you by being ordained and set apart as an ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ? Answer. I do the Lord be in my help. Amen. Question. Will you endure to be diligent in the studies of God's word? Instant and faithful in prayer. And an example. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Are you ready and willing to accept and assume the responsibility to pursue, preach, and practice God's word with boldness to minister to the need of those to whom you are sent without partition and to give yourself sacrificially and without reserve to the educated edification and equipped to the body of Christ. Answer. I do. Question. Will you endeavor to be diligent in the study of God's word, instant and faithful in prayer, an example in Christian piety, and disciple before your people in the community in order that your life may be a worthy Christian example and that upon your ministry the blessings of God may rest. I do the Lord be in my helper. Question. Will you endeavor to be diligent in the study of God's word? Recognize and stand responsibility to your call and aware of your own human weakness, will you seek the leadership and empowerment of the Holy Spirit in order? I do, with the Lord being my helper. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're about to do the um, ordination charge. <clears throat> I charge you to pursue the Word of God. Paul charged Timothy, till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy property may, be, may appear to all. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13 and verse 15. Paul further charged Timothy to study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. I charge you to practice the word of God. Paul affirmed this when he said, this is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he deserves a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, diligent, sober of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt and to teach, not given to wine, nor striker, nor greedy, or filthy lure, but patience, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruleth well his own house. 
having his church in subjection with all gravity. For if a man knows not to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a notice less being lifted up with pride, he falls into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he falls into reproach and the snares of the devil. Let no man despise thou you, but be through an example. Oh my God. For of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity, flee also, flee also you from this lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that calls on the Lord out of a pure heart, but foolish and unlearned question avoid, knowing that they do gender strife, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but he be gentle upon all men. Amen. Apt to teach, patient, and meekness, instruction, those that oppose themselves. If God preemptions will give them repentance to the acknowledgement of truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snares of the devil, who are taken captives by him at his will. I charge you to preach the word of God. We say that again. I charge you to preach the word of God. You are called to be a preacher. Some assume that the call to preach and to do very little about it becoming entangled with very professions of the world. And the ministry becomes a sideline. I believe it is proper to include in the charge that if you are called to be a preacher, then be a preacher. Amen? Amen. You are not called to be a political or, or a school teacher, a politician or school teacher, a businessman or a social worker. You are called a man or woman of God called to preach. Paul's final instructions to Timothy was, I charge thee, therefore, before God in the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead. Then at his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exalt with all long suffering and doctrines. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts shall they heed to themselves and teach and teach teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and should be turned unto fable, fables. But watch thou in all things in doing affliction, do the works of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry at Second Timothy. One through five. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all better take your seat for a minute and rest on knees because you're going to need them in a minute. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Y'all ready for this next level? I wish I had that song with you, but I've been waiting on this moment all my life. <laughs> Amen. I have something I just want to read uh, just for a moment, just for the Eugene. And uh, this is a short piece. Uh, if y'all don't mind, if you could, just so we can, uh, we do have a deacon in here. And Deacon Eugene, if you just stand, I know you stood with those ministers. Uh, I'm just going to read a little bit here. The Office of a Deacon. The concept of a deacon is disclosed in Acts 6, 1 through 7. The choice of a deacon of deacons is denoted in Acts 6, 1 through 7. The credentials for deacons are detailed in 1 Timothy 3, 8, and 13 in Acts 6, 1 through 7. The, the, the 
the companies up in decision, the commands in decision are directed in 1 Timothy 3 and 11. Pastor Charles will read the obligations. The obligation of the deacon. The deacon has a unique role, relationship, and responsibility to the minister and membership of the church in which he serves. The deacon's obligation include leadership, lecturing, listening, and laboring. Deacon should possess sound piety, good business capacity, a large benevolence. They should be ordained by prayer and laying on hands by the presbytery. They hold office at the pleasure of the church during the maintenance of Christian character, faithful service, and sound doctrine. They assist at baptism in the Lord's Supper. They care of the poor and conduct religious meetings in absence of the pastor. Amen. 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 The opportunities of the deacon. The first deacon were appointed in order to serve tables and enable the apostle to give himself continuous to prayer and the ministry of the word. Deacons have the opportunity to serve their membership support the minister, and share the message. Shall I finish with the conclusion?